This is section 3.5, exponential and logarithmic models. And so what we're going to be doing is taking some of the rules and et cetera that we've been using and applying them to certain models and certain equations that uh, occur in the real world. Um, so number one, given two points on exponential uh, curve, write the equation for the graph. And we're going to start off with that one and then create exponential models and then solve exponential problems related to growth and decay. Some of that will be using your calculator. Use Gaussian models, logistic growth, and logarithmic models. Uh, so the first one here, we're going to be given two points, 2, 3, and 5, 54, that are on an exponential model and find the equation of this model. Before we do this, though, I want to set you up with uh, a system of equations that you're familiar with. If you look at this situation, 2x plus 3y is equal to negative 4. And if I have 4x minus 2y is equal to 8. If I want to solve this, what I want to do is, this is a system of two equations, two unknowns. You should be familiar with this. We want to eliminate one of the variables and solve for the other. So here, I'm going to multiply this whole equation by negative 2. So I'm going to get negative 4x. And negative 6y is equal to 8. And I'm going to add these together. The x's drop out. We eliminated one variable, and we're left with the other. And so y is equal to negative 2. Once we solve for one of the variables, what do we do? Well, we go back and substitute it up here and then solve for the other variable. And if you do that, you'd find that x is equal to 1. So we solve for both x and y. Eliminate one of the variables, solve for the one that remains, and then back substitute to figure out what the other one is. That, <coughs> excuse me, that is the same exact thing that we're going to be doing with these exponential equations. But instead of elimination by adding the opposite, we're going to have multiplication, so we're going to have to figure out what to do there. So now, back to this problem, if I take the 2, 3, and what we want to do is write an equation for this, and the two unknowns are going to be a and b. So I have my y, so this would be 3 equals a, b to the x. That's, two equation, uh, that's one equation, two unknowns. If I want to write another equation, since I have two unknowns, I can use the 5, 54. And so 54 is equal to AB to the X. Now, in the previous example up here, we had addition, so we added the two equations. Well, here we have multiplication. So what? how do we get rid of multiplication? Well, if I divide these two, the A's will end up dropping out. And then we can go ahead and solve for the x's. Oh, I made a mistake here. I need to put in my x's. Otherwise, I'd have too many unknowns. This would be 2, and then this would be 5. So two equations, two unknowns. Since these numbers are larger, I probably want to put those on top. It doesn't matter. You get negative exponents if you put the smaller on top, but um, I'm going to do it this way. So if I divide these two, I just get 54. Uh, divided by 3. So that's 18. A divided by A. That's where we eliminate one of the variables. And then I do the B to the fifth divided by B to the second. We subtract the exponents so you get B to the third. So what happens now is that B is equal to the cube root of 18. Can't really simplify that too much. Cube root of 18, you can do a couple of different ways. Uh, you can go to the math button here, and then there's the cube root number 4. So cube root of 18. Hit enter, you could close the parentheses if you want. Otherwise, you can take 18 and raise it in parentheses to 1 divided by 3. Both of those are exactly the same method. So that would be my answer, 2.621. So if we go back to the note sheet here, this turns out to be 2.621, approximately. Now, how do we find A? Well, we go back and back substitute for it. It doesn't matter which equation you use. 
but this equation probably is the easier of the two. Uh, you can probably use the exact answer here too. This is exact when you have the symbols and put it in there if you wish. And so if I go 3 is equal to A, my B is the cube root of 18, which is this to 1 third, and then I'm going to square it. So it's going to be 18 to the 2 thirds. So A is equal to 3 over 18 raised to the 2 thirds. And if we go to the calculator, you can type this in. 2 divided by 18 raised to the 2 divided by 3. And I get 0 0.2911. So approximately 0.2911. And so there's my A and my B. And so if I write my equation, this would be Y equals A, which is approximately 2.621 times B is my base, 0 0.2911. And then raised to the, oh, I did that backwards. I was confused because my base is less than 1. Why am I decreasing when my values are increasing? 2911, 2.621 raised to the x. Here's my equation. Okay, so that's solving as y equals a times b to the x. If we do it with this formula, this is also an exponential, but it's exponential with the natural base of e. And uh, we can set this up and solve this exactly the same way with this formula. It's very similar to PERT. It's just that we use this formula, the CE to the KT, more often with natural growth and sciences and things like this. PERT you use with money. So if I do the same exact thing and I want to write the exponential with a base E, I set it up exactly the same. So I take the point 0.23 and I write it Y well, now i got to put the 2, 3 in. So if I take this, I take the 3 equals C, E to the K. And then this is my T, and this is my C, um, Y value. And so T would be times 2 right there. And then I would also get the other equation, which is 554. And so I get 54 is equal to CEK times 5. That's all in the exponent. I do exactly as what I did before. I can divide both these equations. I'm going to divide them in this form and show you how the negative exponents come about. So if I divide these, 3 divided by 54, that's 1 over 18. And then if I divide C divided by C, that's going to cancel each other out. And then here, the bases are the same, so I'm going to subtract the exponents. I'm going to get e to the negative 3k. Now you can stop this and try to solve for k. Uh, when I see this, you can write this in logarithmic form, but what I like to do instead is I like to just take the log of both sides. That's just a lot. It's just the easy way to do it. So I take ln of both sides. Since the base is e, I'd use the ln. And so I get ln of 1 over 18 is equal to, this cancels out, negative 3k. So to, divide, uh, to solve for k, I divide both sides by negative 3. And then I can get an approximate value for k. So k is approximately 0.963. Three. That's the three decimal places. Sometimes you want to carry these out. Exponentials will get a lot more errors if you don't carry out more decimal places. So maybe we want to go out to four decimal places. So I get a four. So that's my K. How do I find my C? Well, I go back to one of these formulas, probably this one, and plug it back in, back substitution. And so I, I'm going to get three is equal to C e to the point 0.9634 times t, oh, times 2. 
And so now we can go ahead and solve for C. This is C is going to be equal to 3 divided by E to the, I'm going to put the 2 first, 2 times 0.9634. And you put that in your calculator. Now when I look at these equations, I know that I did something wrong. C is my initial value because if I plug in T equal to 0, that will give me my C value, 0.4368. Same thing over on this other side. My A value is also my initial value because that would be when X is equal to 0. So I did something wrong. They should be exactly the same. So I'm going to write out this equation. I'm going to talk about what did I do wrong. 4368, that's my value there. And then I get E to the 0.96. 3, 4 times t. That would be my equation there. So this initial value should be the same as this initial value. It's not. And after some checking, I think that I put 2 in here in my calculator instead of 3. So for you people who are confused on that because you did check with your calculator, that's what the problem was. This would also be 0.4368. So it's a nice way to check with both of the formulas. So there's similarities between the two and some subtle differences. Now I remember when I used to do these problems, I'd say, well, this base is 2.621, and this base is, well, they have this E stuff, and I never related them together. Then after teaching it for a while, yeah, <laughs> I related it together. So what happens is that, why are these the same? Well, the A values or the C values are the same for both equations. This base is different. Well, what does E to the 0.9634 have to equal to make these equations the same thing? And if you go to your calculator and take this, E to the 0.9634, so if I do that, E... to the 0.9634, lo and behold, oh, I get the same thing. That's what's happening. This 0.262 is the base of my y equals a times b to the x. So there we go. There's my two equations. One's in the sect form, and one's in the a times b to the x. So this right here, this next problem, is an application problem about the standard normal curve. This is the equation of something that resembles the standard normal curve. So if I graph this, and you should try this too, because you can see the beautiful symmetry of this curve. It's an even function, and it's even because we are reflect, or this anything that you plug in for x, then you square it. So that's always going to be the same, no matter if it's a negative x or positive x. So we're the same on both sides of the y-axis. And so it's an even function. And the symmetry is beautiful. If you look at some of the y values here, same, same, negative 1 and 1, same, ne negative 2, 2. And as you see, as we get to 3, it becomes very small. And so it does have a um, horizontal asymptote of y equal to 0. For you stats people, a lot of you have, haven't seen this equation before, but that is the equation for the standard normal curve. Now, for the SAT, they use normal curves, but they're of a little bit different form. The form that they use is y is equal to some initial value, e to the negative x minus h quantity squared divided by some value of b. And if you look at what's happening here, this one is centered around the y-axis. So if I go x minus h here, that h is going to tell you what you're going to be centered around. So now I'm going to look at this next example. In 2004, the SAT mass scores followed this normal curve. And if you look up here, x minus 518. Think about what that might do to your normal curve. And then uh, we only have values from 200 to 800 because it becomes negligible after those things. And this is for the uh, SAT scores. X is for the SAT score. Sketch the graph and estimate the average score.